Hi guys, my name is Kiara. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Welcome. I figured I would do this video. It's been a long awaited video. I get asked these questions all the time on my Instagram, on my TikTok, and even in my YouTube comments about how do I live a balanced lifestyle? How do I create a routine? How can I become my best self? And I really do think that these 15 habits that I'm going to share with you guys today are going to potentially help you do just that. But before we get started, make sure to comment what is your top habit that you think has made the most impact on your daily life, your daily routine. And also don't forget to subscribe because I feel like that's sometimes what we often forget to do, but it really does help me and help my channel grow. I do want to preface this video by saying that these are the 15 habits that have helped me. They're curated to my life, what I like to do, how I like to live my life, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do the same things to you because we're all so very different. Whenever I watch these types of videos, I always kind of pick and choose or analyze things and see if they would maybe potentially work well in my life and fit into my routine. And if I find that it doesn't really align with me, if I find that the habit doesn't really help me out in any way, shape, or form, then I stop doing it. Don't just copy and paste somebody's routine or somebody's habits because you see it work for them because it might not necessarily work for you. But with that being said, let's just go right ahead into my top 15 healthy habits. So my first habit is to move your body and I know this is cliche, I know you feel like everyone tells it to you, but I just, you know, it doesn't have to be anything too strenuous. You don't have to do HIIT workouts seven days a week, like I don't promote that at all. I move my body when my body feels like needing to be moved. If my body feels like it needs to rest or it just needs to do something more relaxing, I'll do yoga, I'll stretch, or honestly I'll even just take a day off and lay on the couch and watch Netflix. I'm not saying you have to work out seven days a week or you know walk x amount of steps or move your body for x amount of hours per week i'm just saying that like if you can and if you're able to just do something even if it's light as walking or if you're at the beach because i know a lot of people at the beach this summer going swimming or just like being in the water it counts as moving your body number two is to drink more water i feel like in the summer is when i'm a little bit more forgetful about drinking water so i always make sure to have my emotional support water bottle wherever i go even if I do have a coffee, I always have this with me because I'm always wanting to hydrate myself. I always recommend to drink a water. I like to have my water bottle with me in the car when I go walking, when I go to the store, by my desk, by my nightstand. I'm always refilling it. Number three is meal planning slash meal prepping. If you guys follow me on my Instagram, you know that every single Sunday I post my meal plan of the week where I basically just show you guys what I am kind of planning to eat out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Obviously, things change but this has helped me so much in terms of not over consuming at the grocery store making sure that I don't waste any fruits and vegetables like I'm eating every single thing that I'm buying in the week because basically from the meal plan I make I then make the grocery list and all the food that I buy at the grocery store goes into the meals that I have planned also on Sundays whenever I get home from the grocery store I do make sure to you know cut and prep some of my fruits and vegetables this just makes my life easier so when it comes time for lunch my cucumbers are already sliced up my red peppers are already sliced up sometimes we'll even batch cook rice that way we can just scoop rice into a plate and serve ourselves whenever I have things prepped and ready and whenever I have like a mental note of what I'm gonna be eating that day it kind of stops me from just you know going on my phone and ordering uber eats or doordash and spending $30 on a meal that should theoretically only cost like eight to twelve dollars and number four is pretty similar but it's to start implementing more fruits and vegetables into your diet and when I say diet I mean what you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis so it's not any sort of actual diet I am against diet culture I don't promote diet culture but I do like to implement more fruits and veggies into my day-to-day -day. and don't get me wrong I used to be the biggest fruit and veggie hater but when I started sneaking them into my meals like sneaking them into my smoothies or you know I make this spinach avocado pasta sauce that is so creamy so good and you wouldn't know that it was packed full of nutrients besides the color kind of gives it away. I pretty much follow the 80-20 rule, which is you eat 80% of the time very clean and healthy and full of nutrients, and the other 20 is balance. It's all about balance. So I go out to eat, I enjoy milkshakes, I enjoy french fries and cake and cookies and all of that stuff. And number five is to have go-to recipes that are filling, nutritious, that are gonna keep you full for more than just a half an hour. I have my staple recipes that I pretty much use weekly whenever I'm not really sure what 
I want to cook or when I'm not sure what kind of meal to make, I fall back on these recipes because I know they're good, I know they're filling, and I know they're full of lots of nutrients. Number six is journaling. I have been kind of flippy floppy with journaling. I've kind of fallen off of it sometimes and I get back on it, but I do know that whenever I am constantly journaling, so if I'm journaling daily or several times a week, it makes me feel a lot better. It helps me get all my thoughts out of my head and onto a piece of paper. I constantly stress about things. I'm such an overthinker. I'm such a worrier. So just getting all the thoughts that are in my head onto a piece of paper, letting me read it, let me just, you know, relax and lay it all out there has helped me and my mental health and my self-care so, so much since I've started journaling. I started, I think, pretty much in 2020. I think a lot of people started journaling in 2020 just because the pandemic was such a whirlwind for all of us and all of our emotions and our entire lives were pretty much flipped upside down. And number seven is to wake up and go to bed at pretty much the same time every single day. I'm trying to get better at this. My routine has kind of been all over the place. I work a nine to five job still, so I wanna have time in the morning to do whatever I wanna do before I actually have to start working. So I actually just started today. So today is Wednesday, July 13th. I started project 50. If you haven't heard of it, you might've heard of 75 hard or 75 soft. They're basically these like challenges that are meant to get you back into routine, meant to help you get back into healthier habits, build habits, break habits, challenge yourself, build yourself, become your best self, like all of these things. And one of them is to wake up before 8 a.m. And I've kind of been waking up at like 8, 8.30. And I used to wake up at like 6.45, 7. So I changed the challenge for myself to wake up before 7.30 every single morning because I do want that time to work out in the morning to, you know, just relax, breathe, write, journal, read, whatever I wanna do. And number eight is to prioritize self-care, prioritize your mental health, prioritize yourself. This can be as simple as buying yourself some flowers, making yourself or going out to get yourself some coffee, getting or doing your nails, getting your hair done. It could be like massages and facials, but it also doesn't have to be, you know, spending $3,000 on a purse. Obviously do that if you want to and if you're able to, but it can be as simple as opening up the blinds and letting the sun shine in, you know, getting some fresh air, talking to friends and family, whatever at the end of the day makes you happy and makes you feel more fulfilled and improves your confidence and your self-esteem, do it. You're the only you there is, so you need to treat yourself as best as you can. Number nine is to pre-book your workout classes. I just recently started using ClassPass and ClassPass is basically a membership where you can kind of pick and choose and explore different studios, whether it's a yoga studio, a Pilates studio, a hit class, a kickboxing class, you can kind of explore all of those under one membership versus having a separate membership for a gym and a separate one for yoga and a separate one for Pilates. It's all in one. I like pre-booking my workout classes because I put it on my calendar and I already know like on this day at this time I have a workout versus if I just go to the gym I'm not designated to like a certain time so that makes me you know give the excuse of like oh I don't have to go or I could go later or I don't need to go now or maybe I'll skip it. Having these booked classes, these pre-booked classes, it's kind of like okay I have to go. You already put it in your schedule. You work your schedule around these classes. And at least for me and my membership, if I miss one of these classes, like if I'm a no show, I get charged $14. So that's like another thing looming over my head that I don't want to spend more money than I already am on these memberships. So it's going to make me want to go even more. And number 10 is to read at least 15 pages of a book per day. I feel like this is also so much easier in the summertime, especially if you're going on vacations or going to the beach, but also just taking the time or early in the morning before I actually get my day started or right before I go to bed not only helps me immerse myself in another, you know, storyline, but it also helps me not go on my phone as much. 11 is to make your bed every single morning. Your bed is the largest piece of furniture in your bedroom. So if your bed is made, your room instantly looks like 10 times cleaner, but also this kind of goes hand in hand with my two minute rule. And the two minute rule is basically if something takes less than two minutes to do, just do it, get it out of the way and don't put postpone it for later because your future self is going to be annoyed that you didn't do the dishes, that you didn't do the laundry, that you didn't make the bed, all because it was only going to take you two minutes. If you're doing the dishes, just, you know, wash the dishes for two minutes. And once you already get that started, you're going to keep doing it because you're like, why, why stop after two minutes? Like might as well just finish it. 12 is to limit excess screen time. This helps me not go on Instagram as much, not scroll endlessly on TikTok, not watch so many YouTube videos because I have so many other things 
that I want to do in my day. And I found that scrolling and endlessly scrolling just kind of consumes way too much of my time and likely your time. In the morning when I wake up, I try not to go on my phone for the first hour. Before I go to bed, I try not to go on it the hour before I go to bed. That's why I like to read at night also because instead of scrolling on my phone, I'm just reading. 13 is to make your daily to-do list or at least list out your top priorities for the day. You can kind of time out your day, but also it has like the tasks you need to do this day and the things that you need to do tomorrow. And this kind of just helps me plan out my day and make me see, okay, at a high level, I have three meetings today. So in between these meetings, I can film a YouTube video. I can edit. I can quickly run to the store. This is when I'm working out. It kind of just helps me prioritize my day and it helps me limit a procrastination. Number 14 is to follow other creators that inspire me, that kind of align to my beliefs and align to my goals and how I like to live my life because I found that when I was spending a lot more time on social media, I was comparing myself endlessly to so many people and their lives. So now that I follow a limited amount of people, it helps me not compare myself that much. It makes social media such more of a happier and healthier place to be. Like I find it to be a lot more beneficial now than then when I was just following everyone and comparing myself to everyone. I do have a podcast episode on social media and the comparison game. So if you guys are interested in listening more about my, you know, what I have to say on social media in comparison definitely go check out that episode and the last one number 15 this is probably one of the most important ones not actually but like actually you need to be doing this because I bet you you aren't doing this because I found myself never doing this in habit number two I talked about drinking more water and being more conscious about how much water you're drinking habit number 15 is to wash your water bottle I used to be so bad at washing my water bottle I would probably wash it maybe every two weeks if that sometimes longer at one point I don't remember how long I went without washing my water bottle and I use this all day every single day so this part since I use a straw it gets so so gross so make sure you're washing your water bottle at least at the very minimum one time per week I try to wash it maybe twice per week now just because it does get gross you're putting your saliva in the straw on the lid every single day with that being said these were my top 15 healthy habits that I think have made me live a healthier more balanced more happier life and I hope this helped you in one way shape or form and with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll talk to you guys in next week's video bye